Howdy folks, you're watching Deuce, and today we're talking about the dangers of surplus ammunition. Now, there are many, many reasons why someone would choose to shoot this surplus ammunition, and we can go over that in a later video if you want to, but there are three main reasons why this surplus ammunition could possibly blow up your firearm. Let's go over those right now, ranging from most common to least common. Number one is the squib. To demonstrate a squib load, I have my Weatherby here, it's a Weatherby Vanguard, very good hunting rifle. Let me get it on screen so you can see the barrel. Yes, you can. Okay, and the reason why I chose this was because it is chambered in 30 out 6, which happens to be the ammunition I have that is the crustiest. I did a video on trying to shoot this quite a while back. I'll put a link right there as you can see. but it is very, very old and crusty, was not stored correctly. And that is the hallmark of a squib load. A squib load is when you chamber your ammunition, you put it in there, you pull the trigger, it fires the primer, and it has enough power to shoot the bullet out of the cartridge into the barrel, but not enough power for it to exit the barrel. I have a bullet right here at the end of my Leatherman and it's actually 30 caliber. So let's say you've shot this and it's gone halfway down the barrel. So it's sitting right there. You take your next round, you chamber it because you're an idiot and don't realize that something was very wrong with that shot. You just, you think you just missed a shot. You missed the target. Well, you didn't in fact miss a target. You didn't even get out of the barrel. So you shoot the next round and that bullet goes through the barrel and smacks into the butt end of this other bullet. That means there is a ton of pressure right there that will more than likely blow up the gun. It sometimes, if you're lucky, it will just destroy the barrel and you're pretty much left unscathed. But sometimes all that pressure will come back and shoot toward you, the shooter. It is highly unlikely that you'll come across a squib load with modern commercially made ammunition, but it is not completely unheard of. I myself have had one. It was a nine millimeter from Wolf Ammo, and it just had barely enough, enough energy to get the bullet to the very tip of the barrel. And it was, it did have enough energy to chamber the next round. So if I just pulled the trigger, I would have blown up that gun. Now it was a high point, so it really wouldn't have mattered that much. They're very hardy pistols, and I would have probably been okay. But who wants to experience that? I don't. I moved on with the video, and I forgot to mention one thing about poorly stored ammunition. So let's go back here real quick. Poorly stored ammunition can also, on very rare occasions, make the ammunition more powerful. For example, there are several gunpowder formulas out there that, when exposed to extreme high heat for long periods of time, could in fact change their chemical formula to a hotter, faster burning powder. Almost always it's going to be less powerful than it was meant to be from the factory, but every now and again, the conditions of the storage, the type of powder used, can result in a higher pressure, higher velocity, higher power ammunition, way beyond what your gun is designed to handle. The second most common source of dangerous surplus ammunition turns out not to be surplus ammunition at all, but in fact, reloads. But unfortunately, you were not aware of that. As far as you're concerned, you're buying surplus ammunition from an original factory source from overseas that was meant for their military and ended up in your hands instead. But in fact, what's happened is someone overseas, some scrupulous person overseas, has gotten their hands on some surplus brass, some spent brass from their local military. And they've taken that and they've gone to another surplus market and picked up whatever cheap, the cheapest gunpowder they can find that goes boom. Now, if they have reloaded a rifle, a bunch of random rifle cartridges with a random amount of Reloader 15, you'd probably be fine. It would not be accurate. The speeds would be all over the place because they didn't, didn't dial in the, the powder load. But Reloader 15 is a very slow burning powder and you're probably okay. But if they got, instead of a rifle cartridge type powder, they got bullseye style powder, a very, very fast pistol cartridge powder. If you, if you filled, let's see, what is this? Seven millimeter Magnum. If you filled a seven millimeter Magnum cartridge, with bullseye powder, you are in for a world of hurt. That would not be a happy time, and you would probably be going to the hospital after pulling that trigger. 
it would not be good for anyone involved. And once you realize there's something wrong with that ammo you purchased, the original source of that ammo is gone. They have changed their name, their address, their company is no longer exist, their website's down, what have you. They are a fart in the wind, gone. In fact, this is not even a new occurrence. If you look at the label on this very old box of Winchester cartridges, they warn that if the label is tampered with, then the rounds inside could have been reloaded. And lastly, possibly the least common, but I think most interesting way that surplus ammunition can become dangerous over time is through tumbling. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's say here's a scenario. Let's say there's an entrepreneur in another country who comes across a really good deal on a warehouse full of ammunition. The guy thinks, great, I can buy this really cheap and sell it on the open market overseas and make buku bucks. But unfortunately, no one there cared about this ammunition and it was stored horribly like, well, like this. So, this guy's got a whole bunch of money sunk into this and he says, well, I can't sell it like that. But what if, what if I unbox all this stuff, trash the boxes, and then take all this cruddy, grimy ammo and toss it into a tumbler? I think one of them actually went in. Here's a quick PSA on tumblers. If you are planning to go from cleaning brass in your tumbler to powder coating bullets like I have here, it is almost impossible to go back and forth. Once you have started to use powder coat, it will get embedded and it will be almost impossible to clean without a lot of scrubbing. More scrubbing than I'm willing to do, honestly. So I would suggest if you do go to tumbling your bullets in powder coat, go ahead and just find an alternative way to clean your brass. Simple as that. And with a ton of tumbling and cleaning, you go from cartridges that look like this to cartridges that look like this. That's a remarkable difference, and this is something that you could sell on the surplus market and get away with it for quite some time. With enough tumbling, you can turn a perfectly acceptable powder charge, a Reloader 15 style stick powder, into a perfectly unacceptable charge of bullseye. Turn basically, the stick powder becomes powderized from all the all the rocking and rolling and dancing around in that tumbler into a much, much hotter, faster burning powder, making your 30 out six round going from a perfectly acceptable load to a much, much hotter load that the rifle was never intended to shoot. For my years of collecting surplus rifles, pistols, and ammunition, these are the three most common ways that I have seen personally where a good source of surplus ammunition has turned bad and dangerous. I'm sure there's others out there, but these are the ones that I've come across personally. Well, guys, that's for me today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you give me a like and go up, subscribe. A lot more is on the way. If you have any comments, questions, or show it is, remember to leave that in the comment box of the video. I try to go as many as possible. And as always, you guys have a great day. See ya.